Humans have had jobs for centuries, and frankly, that's pretty boring. During that time, though, our four-legged friends have been climbing the corporate ladder, clocking in, clocking off, and taking care of business. My name's Sarah Jones, and I'm on a mission to find some of Australia's favourite four-legged friends, working dogs from a variety of professions, from search and rescue, tracking and herding, to therapy dogs and truffle sniffers. We have here some of the maremmas that look after the little penguins here on Middle Island. They're little penguins, but it's a big job for these good dogs. Welcome to Dog Jobs Australia. Middle Island is a small, rocky island situated near Warrnambool Harbour and has long been home to a colony of little penguins. Little penguins live mostly in the ocean, coming ashore to molt and to breed. So John, you're from the Middle Island Penguin Project. Where are we now? We're at Flagstaff Hill at the moment and we look over to uh, Middle Island, straight through the trees there. Tell me a little bit about how you got started. Well, I got started with uh, Rebecca Overing was doing a PhD on the island and we had massive fox kills. Mm. And I used to go over there and kind of help. The little penguin once bred in many places along the South Australian coastline and were important food sources for the indigenous population. But with British settlers, along came a large number of rats, dogs, cats and foxes that preyed on the little penguins along with many other native species. So maremmas came into the picture when you were thinking about uh, the fox problem. Yes, the fox problem came to a head in probably 2005. The um, population's got very population low. population was down under 10. Under 10 penguins. From over 800. Wow, yeah. A local chicken farmer by the name of Swampy Marsh suggested Maremma guardian dogs could be used to protect the little penguins on Middle Island. And Dave Williams, who was a, uh, a student at Deacon at the time, he used to collect eggs for Swampy on the farm. And he said to Swampy one morning about the fox problems on Middle Island. And Swampy just, uh, matter of fact, said, uh, oh, a couple of dogs would fix that. Swampy had previously successfully used maremmas to help protect his free-range chickens. That was the idea was born, but we're in a marine park, so it took a long time to get a permit to take dogs to the island. Yeah, was there some pushback about the concept of having dogs in this sort of uh, pristine well, marine environment? Well, one of the first things we had to face was to put dogs on the island, we had to close the island to the public. Right. And we didn't know how we were going to go on that one. So we put a, a survey in the paper and we got a 75% um, positive wow. OK That's pretty from great. the public. And we were very pleased about that. So in a world first, Maremma dogs were trained and placed on Middle Island to protect the penguins from foxes during the breeding season. So Trish, we're here finally on Middle Island. We had to wade through the water to get here. It's a bit of a sandbank. Yes, we did. It was a little bit higher today than we thought it was going to be too, but not too bad. Uh, Oberon was obviously having a great time crashing through the waves. Yeah, he had a little distracted. bit of a swim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did a great job coming over. So there's always uh, two dogs that stay patrolling this boardwalk yeah, area? Yeah, yeah. So at the moment we've got Mezzo and Isola. So they're Italian names for Adal Italian sheepdogs. And that means Middle Island. Makes so sense. these two were actually named by the project. So those two didn't have a naming competition. Oberon, we've just had um, a naming competition for him. There were, we had first had suggestions. So we got hundreds upon hundreds of suggestions and we really wanted it to be something related to the project. So we narrowed that down to six names and Oberon, the king of the fairies, was the one that was chosen. For our little fairy penguins, yeah. it's pretty special. Yeah, absolutely. They're a very old breed. They come from Northern Italy and they're over 2,000 years old. Wow, that's incredible, isn't it? It is. Well, they're bred to protect sheep and goats from wolves. Yeah. So they're a big dog. They can grow up to 60 kilograms. So I'm sure compared to a wolf, fox is no problem for a morale. No. But usually they're not actually killing a fox, it's just the presence of them is enough. Yes. So they'll just stay on the island, hang out, and just that scent 
maybe of a big scary dog might be enough to scare the foxes well, away. They start barking before the fox is anywhere near them. Right. They've got this instinct, they know the fox is there and they'll bark. And it's been a successful program. Have you seen the penguin numbers go up? Yes, we have. It's gone up from less than 10 to over 250. Wow, isn't that fantastic? Yep. That's great. Obviously we've brought Oberon over here to have a bit of a training session with these guys, but we also have Yudi. So Yudi and Metso and Isola will swap around so that we always have two at a time, otherwise they can get lonely. Yeah, that's absolutely fair enough. It's good yeah. to have a little workmate. Yes, a definitely. A little friend. Yeah. And Oberon's not quite big enough yet to stay the whole time. He just no. comes for little training sessions. Yeah, so, so we're going to start to, when the tides are good, we'll bring him out in the morning and we'll take him off in the evening but at the moment he's definitely not ready to be staying on the island without us so it usually takes close on two years for that. Metzor was an incredible dog he actually started working at a year and a half which wow. we've never had before but generally they do need that full two years because they're still a bit too puppy like before that and they can decide to start you know, playing with the sheer waters and that sort of thing, which of course we don't want to no, happen. not ideal. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed a lot of toys scattered about, lots of rope chew toys to play with, so there's yeah. some, something fun for them as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. So um, we find that, particularly Oberon at the moment, he is teething, so he needs something to chew on, and we don't want him chewing on the wood and that sort of thing on the boardwalk, so we've got them. It's nice for particularly his back teeth at the moment to, yeah, to have a chew that's on. that's good. Yeah. And is there a place where they can have a bit of shelter if they fancy it? Yeah, absolutely. So there is a shelter on Middle Island, but they never use it. Right. We actually had two kennels on the island for a whole year and they never <laughs> went in once. Their instinct's so strong, they just want to be out protecting. And if there's something that's going to interfere with their sight or their hearing, they're just not going to do it. So we do have some shade sails at the front and that's what they'll use most of the time. But if it's hailing or pouring rain, they'll be out in it. They just love yeah. to work. Wow. So a lot of people might meet the uh, Maremmas and think, oh, they're so cute and cuddly and they're c certainly a very cute dog. Would you recommend them as pets? No. Right. Not unless you have that they're beautiful dogs to have as pets, but you'd need five acres or more. Right. A big commitment. Big commitment. I've also heard, even though they're so great at their specific job, that they're really hard to train. Almost impossible. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that, do you think? There's some inborn instinct in them. They're a guard dog and they've got their own instinct to guard and you can't train them in obedience. Right. They They're very they hard to lead. They don't have the instinct to please you like some dogs no. have. No. <laughs> Unless you've got a treat in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're no good in traffic or in the city. Okay, so they're really a country dog and they're happiest if they're, they're actually doing their job, looking doing after Doing a job, some looking livestock. after something. Yeah, whether it's sheep or goats or chickens or ducks, doesn't matter. Yeah, you actually um, bring them up with chickens, I hear, to, chickens, to, to start right. off with, so yes. that they get really used to that protecting role. Yeah, well, as Swampy used to say, penguins are only chickens in dinner suits. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Whilst filming Dog Jobs Australia in Warrnambool, our crew chose to stay at the Deep Blue Hotel and Hot Spring. With 80 guest rooms, including penthouse apartments boasting expansive ocean view, the Deep Blue Hotel and Hot Springs is a luxurious home away from home. Immerse yourself in the sanctuary with 15 enhanced hot springs bathing experiences and a nourish dome. Indulge in a relaxation massage or organic facial and body therapy at the day spa. Relaxation awaits. To book your stay at the Deep Blue Hotel and Hot Springs, head to thedeepblue.com.au. So Tom, we're here at the home of the Maremmas. This is where they live when they're not on the island. Yes, this is where when they're having a rest from the island or during the off season, they stay out here with chickens, which is part of, a big part of their training factor for the puppies. Oh sure, so even when they're just at home, they like to still be looking after another animal. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it teaches them to, you know, to be calm around birds and other animals and you know, what they should be looking after and what they should be protecting from. Um, and I know one of the dogs here has retired, so. Yeah, so Chula, she's uh, 11 years old and she just retired. And that must be nice for her to have this little retirement home where all her pals are still around. Yeah. She still has some chickens that she can look out for. Yeah, definitely. Well, she's still very much a guardian dog, chasing everything she sees that she thinks is a threat. And she's great for training the pups still as well. Like, you know, she shows them the ropes, shows them how they should be acting when they're on the island. and. 
how to be a good guardian. Fantastic. Now, our littlest pup, just here in the background here, is Oberon. Yeah. And can you tell us how old he is? So he's just about to be seven months old. That is amazing. Yeah. So I've heard that they put on about a kilo a week when they're growing up. Yeah, so yeah, about a kilo a week. So he was about 10 kilos when we got him, and he's now just about to be 30 kilos. Wow. Uh, so he's not quite fully grown. He's still got a bit more to go. Yeah, still, still a bit to go. Yeah. So not many people have gotten the opportunity to meet Oberon, the puppy that's being trained up. Uh, yeah, well, we want our guardian dogs to be a bit wary of people they don't know. That way he'll, he'll do his job, you'll know people shouldn't be on the island and to be wary of that and bark at those perceived threats. So we try and limit his contact to the main handlers and obviously you know, a few select people from the public. Fantastic. And how do you choose the pups when you're choosing which dog is going to be the best? Uh, so we, dog? we really want a calm, confident dog. So when, when we go to the breeder to meet them, it'll be you know, whichever dog kind of is interested enough to come up and see us but doesn't want to be hanging around, is happy to go and do its own thing and explore and really check everything out. And that's, that's you know, the great signs of a guardian dog. Yeah, I guess you need a dog that's going to be quite confident on the island and independent. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, a, do a dog that doesn't need to be around people and will go and do its own thing and make sure everything going on around him or her is going fine. So Oberon the puppy is still in training, when do you envision that sort of wrapping up? Uh, probably when he's about two years old will be when he's going on the island full time and spending nights over there like Metso and Isla currently are. Wow, so it's quite a long process, the yeah. training process. Yeah, it's a long it? training time, yeah. And are, are there any specific behaviours you need to train with the animals? Uh, well, so we have short-tailed shiwas that crash land on the boardwalk on the island. Um, so a big part of that is getting them used to the, the birds landing and to not chase them, to just let them do their own thing and go back into their burrows. Yeah, I can imagine with a really bouncy puppy, that could be a bit of a challenge Yeah, ab Yeah, absolutely. He gets very excited over all the new things to see, but he's learning very quickly and he's doing an excellent job so, so you've far. seen quite a big progress for Oberon yeah. over the time you've had him? Yeah, I mean, he's been confident from the first time we got him and from the first time he was on the island, he was loving it, but he's, you know, slowly started to learn that he's just to, you know, watch things that are going on instead of try and be involved in everything. And I'm sure he's probably learning as much from the other dogs on the island as he is from the trainers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Yudi and Chula, our two old girls, they're, they're the bigger teachers than we are. They, you know, they really show him what he should be barking at and what he should be doing and how he should be behaving. And we're just there to reinforce it when we're around. You really go off how the dogs are feeling as to how long they stay and uh, yeah. when they're feeling comfortable to stay a yeah, bit longer? Yeah, or... absolutely. So generally we'll have them here for at least a week at a time, but sometimes they tell us they don't want to come back to the farm. So this is their home too. They have two territories to protect. So at the gate where we came in, if they feel like they've had enough time on Middle Island, they will start to come out with us. If they don't, if they want to make sure that they stay here, they'll just stand back and they say, Nat, thanks Trish, we'd like to stay here for another night. So, Fantastic. Yeah. That sounds like a really good work arrangement. I yeah, it really is. Box. So the dogs are fantastic. They're very good at telling you what they want and they get so excited to come to the island. So it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, you could it. really see how excited Oprah yeah. was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So the island's been closed for a long time now. It has, yes. So um, the the island was closed over 10 years ago now. We actually had people walking over the soft sandy sediment areas of the island and unfortunately they were unintentionally crushing penguin burrows. So we were seeing uh, chicks being killed from that and of course we don't want that to be happening. It's counterintuitive to what we're doing. And of course we don't want our dogs to be over socialised. So if people were coming to the island all the time and they will leave to play with people on the beach instead yeah. of doing their job. So dotted around the island there are these little burrows yeah. um, and there are obviously some little man-made burrows that will give them a bit more protection. Yeah absolutely, so we do have man-made burrows and we've also got lots of natural burrows. It's the males that will come up and they'll dig the nest and they can be two to three metres deep. So because we actually reach our arms in the burrows to get them out, I'm clearly going to get nowhere near a two to three metre deep burrow. No. So we and even actually. If you did, they're quite biting. Yes, so. they are. <laughs> so we actually use the artificial burrows, and that way we can easily get onto the penguins and we, we can make sure that we're monitoring all the time. So this was adopted because this is what Phillip Island use. Yep. So we actually do all of our training at Phillip Island. We make sure that we're doing all the same things so then we can share data and we can compare things as well. And the program's mostly active around breeding season or are you yeah. coming back throughout the year so, just checking so what's happening? breeding season is generally between October until the end of February each year. 
Of course, things are changing. So in the last few years, we have started to see the penguins arriving whenever they feel like it. So whenever they've got good enough condition that they think that they can breed, they'll come in. So this year we actually had some come in June and then um, we had others coming later on. So wow. we have to really try and make sure that whenever it's safe for us to get across to Middle Island, that we do have the dogs there. Foxes are becoming more bold and they might try to swim across the island. So that's where we're sort of the last line of defence here. So John, we're here with two of the ambassador dogs, the friendly face of the Marema project. Whereas if we had the actual guard dogs here, they might not be so interested in They're not meeting so anyone that's not no, a penguin. That's right. <laughs> Fantastic. And they live right here on site. Yes, right here in the paddock. Right, and we've also got some other livestock around you. I can see some yes, sheep, some got alpacas. Some sheep. We've got a miniature goat here as well. So I guess they do a little bit of guarding when yes, they're here on site. Yes. Well, let's have a look around and see if Avis is gonna come. Come on, Avis. <laughs> this way? Good job. So these two dogs aren't actually related? No. But they're obviously good pals. They come from the they, same breeder. They do a little bit. Yeah, but they, they live together, these two, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> so as well as working and uh, doing their important uh, day job of looking after all the uh, animals here and uh, meeting all the public, they also have a lot of time off for playing, it seems yes, like. that's right. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> We have quite a number of volunteers helping out with we the project. We have a lot. Yeah. We need a lot of volunteers because one of the things we've got to do, we've got to do penguin counts every two weeks during the breeding season. Wow. And that gives us an idea of the numbers and how they're going. And also we do the other um, survey during the day where we go and check the boxes and we've got to check and see who's in the box. Fantastic. And if so they're not microchipped, we've got to do that. My first time coming in to meet them and first time coming out to the farm, as soon as I got here, you know, they were coming up to meet me and you know, two guardian dogs that obviously don't interact with people very much. It's really special having them be so happy and keen to meet me and to introduce themselves and it's, it's really special to see them like that. That's amazing. They're also, for a, a breed that has that reputation of being hard to train, it must feel good when you win their trust and, absolutely. and you make some training breakthroughs with them. Yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful that just, you know, you slowly build that connection and to just see how happy they are to see you as, you know, they get more used to you. It's, just, it's amazing. That's really special. Now, obviously the public can't get onto Middle Island anymore. It's a very protective space. Yes. Um, but people might be keen to meet the, certainly the ambassador dogs. Is there a way for the public to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So a fantastic thing about that is because you can't come to Middle Island, we still get the opportunity to meet a Maremma. So every summer Victorian school holidays, the whole school holidays, we have meet the Maremma sessions where we go over to a little cafe that's near the break wall we talk about penguins because after all that's what the whole project is about and then we also come across to Stingray Bay so the beach that's just in front of Middle Island we bring down one of the ambassador dogs and everyone gets to have a pat and a photo and learn all about the project. That sounds pretty special. Yeah so it's a really interactive thing so it's fantastic for kids but we get people of all ages just thinking that it's a great experience. Who doesn't love a beautiful big dog? Yeah absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. To book your visit, go to warrnambulpenguins.com.au or alternatively, you can book at the Visitor Information Centre or call them directly on 1800 637 725. All ticket proceeds go towards financially supporting the ongoing success of the project and all funds from the tours go towards the care of the Middle Island Marema Dogs. So obviously a project like this would take a lot of money. Absolutely, and we're not a business. You know, we are a conservation group essentially. So uh, we're really lucky that we have a number of major sponsors on our project. So Warnable Pet Stock is a huge sponsor. So they provide all of the food for all seven of our dogs, including retired Chula, for free. Oh, that's fantastic. So that's about a $10,000 value wow. each year. And they also supply us with all kinds of other things and give us advice. So they're fantastic. Well, since Oberon is maybe going to go up to be 60, 
60 kilos, yes. I'm sure he's going <laughs> to eat a fair amount absolutely, of that Absolutely, absolutely. And then we also have uh, a, a local vet called the Vet Group. And they provide all flea and worming treatment, all vaccinations, all vet checkups for free, and they do so much more for us. They're incredible as well. And as we mentioned before, Deakin Uni, they're a major sponsor of the project. So both through a research partnership, as well as providing us with other support. And of course, Warrnambool City and Warrnambool City Council and Flagstaff Hill, huge sponsors of the project. They give us monetary support, as well as all sorts of other things. So like they maintain the Middle Island Boardwalk, they do all kinds of things for us, they advertise the tours, absolutely fantastic and really the Warrnambool community is yeah. why this project is so successful. So the Warrnambool community feel ownership over this and they'll even, if people try to come over to Middle Island where they're not supposed to be, the locals will actually tell them off. Yeah, it and sounds like a real community innovation that everyone's getting together, doing absolutely. whatever they can, volunteering helping out financially. Definitely, um, it's just incredible. If members of the public are watching this and yeah. feel like they would like to get involved and support uh, yeah. the project, is there a way they can donate? So there's two ways. One is by coming on our tours. So 100% of the profits of our tours goes towards looking after our beautiful dogs and anything to do with the project. And also on our website, warnablepenguins.com.au, they can donate. There's a donate button, so you can hop on and donate. Also, we have donation boxes at many of the uh, local shops around town, up at Flagstaff Hill. We've got one down at the Pavilion Cafe, out at Rafferty's. So really lots of ways to help out if, if you want to. Well, if you've been watching this program and you're feeling the love, I think people should definitely donate. Yeah, definitely. those little penguins. People can also follow us on social media. So we're on Facebook at the Middle Island Maroma Penguin Project. So on there, you know, you can see all the updates, see the pups grow up and all of that sort of yeah. thing, and even be involved in the voting of the names. Um, we also are on Instagram and Twitter at Wable Penguins, so you can hop on there and follow our story on there as well. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Well, Trish, this has just been an amazing day. Yeah. Um, seeing the, meeting the ambassadors, seeing Tool in a little retirement home, going over to the farm. Oh, it's been absolutely special. Thank you so much. Oh, no worries. Anytime. Yeah, as, as you can tell, I'm sure that from all of us, we just love our job and yeah. we're so lucky to be a part of it. So, That's yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing our story. One of the best things is seeing how much the dogs really love this as well and yeah. have such a happy life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful. Well, today's been an amazing day meeting all the incredible people at the Middle Island Penguin Project and most importantly, meeting my new best mate Oberon and all his hard-working Marama pals. My name's Sarah Jones, this was Dog Jobs Australia. <laughs>